The Pair Gear 7.5 F2.8 comes in a small white box. Inside the box is a lens soft case. The lens is well built. It's small, but its all metal and glass construction makes it feel solid and well built. It has nine elements and eight groups. The lettering font is a little small and narrow, so if you do need glasses for reading, you're going to need them for using this lens. It weighs 343 grams with the lens cap, 302 grams without the lens cap. Others have said that it weighs less, but I'm not sure where they got their measurements from. Normally, at this part in the video, I'd be showing you some sample stills and video, but I ran into some problems. You see, this Pear Gear 7.5mm f2.8 fisheye lens seems to be having some technical difficulties. Now, I know what some of you are thinking, but Simon, you don't own a camera that fits the EFM mount. You don't have an EFM body, an M50, M5, or M6. You're right, I don't. But today, the village mayor traveled all the way up from Mississauga to help me out. He said, look, Simon, I can loan you my M50 so you can test out the lens. And I thought, well, what a better way to test out the lens but to invite the village mayor up himself. We practiced all precautions, safety and health precautions, and we tested it out together. He brought up his M50, we put this lens on, and as soon as we started filming, or attempted to film and shoot photos, nothing would happen. And so I thought, well, could it be because we've got the settings on the lens properly? Let's make sure it's, because this thing is manually adjusted, checked it out, and no, it didn't seem to be a problem. Turned off the camera, unmounted the lens, and then mounted it back up again, and guess what? Still didn't work. But we did notice something. It was flashing F00. Now, it would be nice to have a lens that could do something like f.9 or f.8, but there's no such thing as f00, and that's code for communication failure or communication error. So, sadly, we couldn't test out this lens, and I really wish we could. This thing is well built, it's solidly constructed, and I wanted to help sort of disprove myths that fisheye lenses are toys and they're not for serious filmmakers. You see, any lens or any body or any accessory is a tool that helps us get certain effects, and you can produce very good, very professional effects with a fish, or sorry, professional stills and video, not effects, that's something else, with a fisheye lens, especially one like this, and sadly we weren't able to do that. And it's a real, <laughs> um, it, it's really disappointing because um, I was looking forward to this, we had planned this for a couple of days, um, the village mayor had to travel all the way up from Mississauga, and I, of course, had to get up ready, get things, the gear ready, put it in the car, and we had to travel all the way out to here, this secret location, so that we could film this and have some really great views, and we really did um, have some great views when we first got out here this morning. The, the sky was crystal blue, we had these whiffs of white clouds, it looked really, really great. The trees were bright green, but we also had some maples that were already turning with some uh, oranges and reds and some yellow, so it looked really, really good. And of course, we've got this brand new bridge here, which I'm standing on. You can't really tell right now because I've got the trees behind me, but we've got so many different lines going on here, which work very well for traditional photography. But we also had the scene set up so that we could take some great um, video and stills with this fisheye. So that's really, really disappointing. But I want to be, uh, say a big thanks to Tim, the village mayor, for coming up here to helping me, to collaborate with me, to help get this video done. I am looking at getting, uh, an, I'm going to speak to the company about getting another lens that we can redo this. This, I wouldn't call this a fail in any stretch of the imagination. Sometimes things just don't work out, and every now and then some products make it past the assembly line that have glitches in them that prevent them from working. Or could it be something with a camera? Well, we did test out other lenses with the camera. Now, these ones were fully automatic. Um, we didn't notice any problems there, so we do believe the problem is with the lens. So I'll update you guys once I have more information and I've heard back from the company, and then perhaps we can do another full-length review on this lens. Now, let's turn it over to Tim and see what Tim has to say about this whole experience. Um, hopefully I don't see bears here, but uh, that's how far north I actually am. No, just kidding. Um, yeah, so my name is Tim, also known as Village Mayor, and uh, I'm here in beautiful northern Ontario, I suppose. Uh, yeah, the, the, uh, the day's been really good so far. Uh, this morning was nice and cold, and uh, the sun was shining. Perfect day for a, a bit of a day trip uh, up here. So I'm from uh, the west end of Toronto in Mississauga, so yeah, it took me about an hour, but the drive was pretty good. 
and um, son was able to take me to this very beautiful um, marsh area in the middle of a subdivision. Um, there's lots of trees here and, and there's a couple of uh, trees that are starting to turn color here so it's very very beautiful. Uh, so one of the reasons why I'm up here is because I actually have the Canon M50 um, which is of course uh, well it's my camera that uh, is now in retirement because I have the R6. Uh, so I was really excited to come up here because I wanted to try out the fisheye lens which is actually attached to this camera and you know it's I really wanted to try its capabilities in landscape landscape photography um, because I've always heard that it's uh, for you know creative for, to take creative photos I always thought it was kind of a toy uh, and, and it wouldn't be one of my um, lenses that I would have in my uh, uh, camera bag so took up the opportunity to try this out and uh, attach it to the camera and unfortunately it could not take photos so that is unfortunate uh, what happened was you could see through the viewfinder but it, it kept saying f00 so I thought okay I'm going to try the pancake lens which is the uh, f 2.2 um, uh, uh, 22 millimeter native lens and it worked perfectly fine so it must be the lens itself which is unfortunate. Uh, the only thing I can say that's really good is the built quality. It's it's heavy. I can say that uh, with the lens attached, uh, the M50 it makes the M50 really heavy now. Uh, so it's a metal construction, and yeah, it looks really really good. It's too bad that it's uh, it's uh, can't take any photos. So anyway, uh, thank you very much uh, for Simon for letting me to uh, collaborate with him, and um, hopefully we can get another. Uh, sample of the lens so we can try it out for real. Anyway, in this episode of Behind the Scenes, I want to take a look at what happens when things go wrong. We spent a lot of prep time to be able to put this video together. Just getting to this point took us, well, probably together about five hours of planning and communication, figuring out how we want to do things, me planning ahead a storyboard on what shots I wanted to get, where I wanted to be, Getting to the locale, this was not an easy location to get to, and the village mayor can tell you how difficult it was. We had to, well, it felt like we were escaping from some place or escaping to some place. It was not an easy location to get to because this location is currently under construction, and you can get to it without violating any signs, but you have to know the location, and you have to walk way out of your way to get here. So it was a very, very interesting experience this morning. And when it didn't work, what bothered me the most is that it, I felt like it could be something wrong with me. I had done something wrong. I hadn't set up the camera properly or there was some setting. And that bothered me the most because the last thing I want to do when I'm reviewing anything is be the problem. I didn't want to be the problem causing it. And sometimes when we're out in the field and we're trying things out, we do think it's us first. So we keep looking to see if there's a setting. And in this case, thanks to... Um, smartphones or remote access, I was able to search online and just validate that F00 did mean that we had an error and it was a communication error. So at that point I could have said, well, let's pack things up. Obviously it didn't work out, no video today. But I thought this is a great opportunity to show you that things can go wrong with gear, even gear like this pair gear that is, like I said, very well constructed. Uh, with the lens cap, the lens cap is actually full metal as well. And with the lens cap on you're looking at 343 grams, which is the better part of a pound. A pound, I believe, is about 450 grams. And it feels really, really solid. Um, definitely not cheaply made. And I'd say this is probably one of the best made fisheye lenses in this um, capability range. Um, this lens costs, I think, around $120. Just very, very well put together. But sadly, no matter what you buy these days, there's always a small percentage of products that get out the door that didn't get caught in the QA or QC te uh, test phase, and it just happened. So I'm going to reach out to the company, see if we can't get another lens to retest, and just chalk this one up to, oops, but I want to give you guys an idea of what goes on behind the scenes when we do film these videos and things don't go well, the things that we do to check things so that we present you with honest information. I'm not here trying to get a ton of views. And if you've been watching me for a long time, you know this, my review videos, my tutorial videos don't score nearly as well. 
but I still think they're important. I love new gear. I love fiddling around with new gear. I just got some wireless mics the other day that I want to be able to test out. But before I got onto those, I really wanted to test out the pair gear. I was really looking forward to trying out this lens. But um, sadly, um, there's a problem there. And I am also getting some more gear this week. I've been in contact with some other companies trying to get gear, trying to get different CF cards, trying to different, get different camera bodies. So coming up a little later this week, don't be surprised if you see some new camera bodies on The Ordinary Filmmaker. But a big thanks to Tim, the village mayor, for assisting me today. When I've said on the channel before, I appreciate that I've got the smartest audience on YouTube, that you guys are constantly engaging, that you're participating in polls, you're submitting questions, you're commenting on videos, and you're helping out other um, viewers with their questions, and I really do appreciate that. So when Tim said, hey, you know, maybe I can loan you my camera, would you be interested in that? I, I thought, well, let's take that a little bit of a step further and invite the village mayor up and where we could do something collaboratively, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, me and Tim spent the better part of the morning fiddling, fiddling around with the cameras. Then afterwards, we talked about filmmaking and photography. Uh, but others like Bogdan, um, that, that opening logo, that sequence, Bogdan created that. He wasn't too enamored with my first uh, opening sequence. He thought it was a little long, and it was. And he said, look, I've got an idea for you. Would you be interested in working on it? And so collaboratively, we worked with Bogdan opened it up to everybody on the channel. Hey, these are some ideas. What do you think? And collaboratively, after a couple of weeks, we came up with that intro. So this channel, it's not just about me. It's about building a community where we can work together. We can ask questions. We can get answers. And I try to provide you the information as honestly and as transparently as I can. Um, I'm not trying to give you something that's completely unbiased because there's no such thing as delivering any sort of message unbiased. There's always going to be some sort of a bias and one of the biases that I bring is that I'm not a professional. I'm an ordinary filmmaker. I'm like a lot of you out there. I'm mom, dad, brothers, sisters, grandfathers, grandmothers who have a camera and we like to shoot video with it. That makes us filmmakers. We're, we're not Steven Spielbergs. And what we're doing is we're having one of the most important jobs we can have as a parent is, or a student is we're capturing life, we're capturing our family, and we're storing that for later on because... When you get to be my age, 50 or later, our memories start to go a little bit. And when you have videos and photos of life's memories, they really, really matter. And then when you can put some score to that, some music, some audio, pick it up and tune things in a little bit, dial things up, they can have a dramatic emotional effect. So that's why I think The Ordinary Filmmaker is very important. That's kind of my goal with everything. Yes, I do film with cameras like the R5. I want to bring in the A7S III. I even want to bring in some cinema cameras like the C70 or the C50 because, well, well, most of us can't afford these cameras. They're a lot of fun. And I'm kind of borrowing a little bit from the television show called The Top Gear, which has changed into or spun off into the Grand Tour, talking about the original hosts. And it's not so much about the antics of what those guys do. It's, it's that they look at cars in a different way. They don't look at cars from the viewpoint of somebody who's looking at buying a car. They look at cars from the viewpoint of somebody that's 11 years old or still that has that inner child that's excited by fast cars and imagines what it would be like to be with them and to be able to travel with these cars, to go on expeditions and still have that inner child inside with that inner voice. And that's kind of my approach to this. I, I want to show off some of the best out there in camera gear, but from the viewpoint, of an ordinary filmmaker and photographer. Guys, thanks so much for watching me here again today on The Ordinary Filmmaker. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like a chance to win the Canon EOS 5. I'm giving away a brand new EOS R5 when I reach 100,000 subscribers. Can't wait that long? Well, at 20,000 subscribers, I'm giving away a pair of microphones. I'm giving away the Tascam, not the Tascam, the Synco S6E and the corresponding shotgun microphone, the M3. So that's when I reach 20,000 subscribers. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you again soon.